Birth of the Black Mage. Some years after the founding of Aurora, powerful creatures of darkness, known as omens, began appearing around the world in response to the omens' disruption or disrupting his trade. The infamous mogul of Ariant, Hatzer, hired a wandering mercenary to find the legendary white mage and convince him to stop the omens. Author's note, the mercenary's gender depends on the player character, as you're playing as them in the white mage's chapter of Grand, Athenani of Grand Athenaeum. The mercenary accepted the job, not because they wanted the money, but because they felt a sense of kinship with the white mage, and wondered whether he was as sick of the world as they were, believing that it may have been the reason why he went into seclusion. Three months later, the mercenary following leads of the White Mage's location, or followed leads of the White Mage's location, to Ellen Forest, where they made a deal with the Fairy Queen Athenia for the location of the White Mage in exchange for eliminating the human poachers who were kidnapping fairies and grave robbing their resting places. The mercenary noted that Aphenia was clearly enamored by the White Mage, who had promised her that he would bring peace to the world, and wondered what kind of man could captivate even a queen. With their deal complete, Aphenia directed the mercenary to the Forest of Peace. Along the way, the mercenary encountered a girl named Aaron, who was hunting omens to avenge her family. After learning that the White Mage might have the answer for how to get rid of the omens, she decided to come with the mercenary. Three months later, the two discovered the white mage when he rescued them from a large horde of omens. He brought them to the Aurora Great Temple in order to arrest and recover. The mercenaries asked the white mage what he was doing studying when he had the power to make the world a better place. The white mage smiled and explained that what he was seeking was infinite knowledge that existed beyond their comprehension, a knowledge that could both complete and evolve humanity. Intrigued by the white mage's idealism, the mercenary decided to stay and help Aurora with their research. Months later, the white mage secluded himself in his room, having entered the final stages of his research. Soon, however, Aaron grew impatient with Aurora's apparent lack of concern for the growing number of omens and decided to solve the problem herself. The mercenary tracked her down and rescued her from a massive master omen before taking her back to the Aurora Great Temple. An injured Aaron attempted to warn him, warn him about something, but fell unconscious soon after. As Aaron slept, the mercenaries pondered on her words and soon realized that the omens began appearing around the same time that the white mage began his research in the Forest of Peace and that the larger master omens began to manifest around the time he went into his final stages of research. The mercenary attempted to force their way past the mages of Aurora into the white mages' chamber. As the mages blocked the path, the mercenary began to argue with them until they all heard the white mages' warped voice. The white mage had stepped into the divine realm, exuberant at having found the ultimate light the power that could alleviate humanity and forever rid the world of corruption and evil. Just then, however, the overseer's chains of laws wrapped themselves around him and firmly held him back. Author's note, the Black Mage's signature weapon of chains is meant to symbolize how he weaponized the overseer's own chains of law and order to break free of them in the process. The White Mage cursed the overseers for keeping the world broken and incomplete, vowing that he would do anything to defy the will of the world in order to deliver salvation to humanity, even if it meant that he had to destroy the world itself and replace it. As the horrified mages of Aurora opened the door, the white mage declared that he could not find the ultimate light, not because he had failed, but because it never existed to begin with. However, he said that there was an ultimate darkness which he had seen with his own eyes. In that moment, the white mage embraced the ultimate darkness, the power to destroy, and awakened as the transcendent of light. The resulting explosion destroyed the Aurora Great Temple and mortally wounded all of the mages of Aurora. 
Though on the verge of death, the mercenary attempted to chase down the newly born transcendent, intent on killing him before he could destroy the world. Stumbling past the bodies of the Aurora researchers, the mercenary encountered a ball of pure light, the very light that the white mage had cast away within himself, as an awakened transcendent of light could not wield both light and darkness. Upon running into him, the mercenary reach rechristened him as the black mage and charged to attack, though they were easily killed. As Aaron cried over the lifeless body of the mercenary, the black mage set out to realize his goal.